My buddy Mike Beaver had been inviting me to ride the Milwaukee Trail near his home in Bedford, Indiana. I finally made it there, and I'm very glad I did. Mike first mentioned the Milwaukee Trail to me some time ago. I did a little research and thought, yeah, it looked okay. Not fabulous. Maybe not worth the three hours round trip drive from our home in Madison. But when Mike mentioned it again in a text message, everything lined up for me, so I thought, yeah, I'll go check it out. Besides, I'd get to spend time with Mike, making the trip worthwhile, even if the trail was ho-hum. The trail wasn't ho-hum. It was, oh wow, very scenic, well-designed, and well-maintained. An enjoyable ride of about 22 miles out and back. By the way, the full name is the Milwaukee Road Transportation Trailway. I've had mixed experiences on rail trails and don't make a point of riding them, especially those in urban areas. But the Milwaukee Trail was lightly used on the day we rode and beautiful from end to end. Neither condition applies to a lot of urban rail trails. Detractors will bring up the stench from a confined animal feeding operation near the trail at one point, and it's a valid observation. But CAFOs are an unfortunate reality of modern food production in America, and you're in and out of the odor in minutes as you ride. We rode our mountain bikes, but you could easily ride a gravel bike on this surface. In fact, soon after we started, we encountered a rider coming the other way. She was on a road bike and having no apparent handling issues. Mike mentioned that Richard Vonnegut, president of Indiana Trails, had been instrumental in getting the trail built. Richard's name was a blast from my past, from my decades of relentless volunteering. In 1993, I was a founding member of the Indiana Bicycle Coalition, now known as Bicycle Indiana, and held several board positions with that organization over the years. Richard was also active in that group, so we saw each other at meetings several times a year for many years. Just being in Bedford was a reminder of that period of my life. I worked closely with Les Wadzinski, who was the recreation manager for the Hoosier National Forest at that time, in the development of mountain bike trails on the forest. My wife and I made occasional trips to meet with him at Forest Service offices in Bedford. Back then we thought Bedford was okay, but nothing special. Well, it's pretty special now. The trail helps, of course. But when Mike and I discussed lunch, he rattled off the names of several locally owned options. The place we ate at was one of several on the downtown square, and it was very good. The trail ends at Williams Dam. It's a fishing area maintained by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. There's not a lot there, but it makes a convenient place to chill for a bit before heading back to the start. We caught some rain on the return ride fairly heavy and fairly persistent. But the trail drains well so we just kept on cranking and rode out of the rain in time to have a few dry miles before we got back to our trucks. My thanks to those supporting my efforts. You can do so on a monthly basis through Patreon or with a one-time contribution through PayPal. Links are in the description. For this video, I share the three things I like least and best about rail trails with my behind the scenes and angel supporters on Patreon. The Milwaukee Trail and the overall experience of being in Bedford was a great way to spend a day. My thanks not only to Mike, but to all the trail supporters and local entrepreneurs who made it a great day. I'm Rich Reese, and I'll see you out there.